Hey guys, how's your day going? Welcome back to Plant Based Alley. My name is Alicia and I'm super excited to be making this video. I'm super excited for you guys to be watching this video. I have for the longest time known that I should be organizing my fruit and veggie in a different, better, proper way, but blissfully ignored it. I even got these super cute wire baskets that I hang on either side of the kitchen windows because they're cute. Why wouldn't I want my stuff up there? Except for now, the more that I've educated myself, I've realized I'm doing myself the biggest disservice by hanging almost everything up there and then just throwing everything else in the fridge, no organizational pattern whatsoever. So I took the time, I looked some stuff up and I'm super stoked to organize everything with you, tell you what I've learned and hey, maybe we will all be better fruit veggie people after this. I don't know, but I am going to, throughout the video, pop up a couple things on the screen, all of which are from the same website. So I will link that website in the description if you want to read it as well. I thought that it was a great article. But when it comes down to it, it seems that the biggest issue or the first thing that I would want to mention in regards to fruit and vegetables is ethylene. So, photo popping up. You've got your ethylene producing fruit and vegetables. You have your fruit and vegetables that are sensitive to ethylene, that aren't producing it of course, but they're just sensitive to it. And then you have your fruit and veg that are not sensitive to it. So they're not producing it, but it also doesn't bother them so they can be with a bunch of different things. So what is ethylene? Ethylene is a gas released by some fruit and veggies that cause produce to ripen or go bad faster. Very simple. So by me putting everything together, as I said, I'm doing myself a huge disservice because I'm putting some things next to other things that literally just being in the air around each other is going to make them rot. Why would I do that to myself when I sometimes already have a hard enough time getting through all of my fruit and veggie in time? So we're gonna get better at this. So for the moment, putting the ethylene idea to the side, you also have three different categories to put your fruit and veg in for things that can be stored at room temp, things that should be room temp until they ripen and then they go in the fridge, or things that just start off in the fridge to begin with. If you wanna talk about freezing things, I'm totally cool with freezing stuff. Some people are nervous about freezing fresh fruit and veg, or even buying things frozen. But fun fact about when you buy stuff frozen, they are actually freezing it at its peak ripeness. So that's almost the best fruit that you can get for a smoothie. And then if you have foods that are gonna go bad, as I mentioned, that happens to me sometimes, I throw them in the freezer. Whether it's chopping up apples, bananas, everything works pretty well in there. So I've written down I have a list that I'm gonna pop up to that has a lot more things, but I wrote down the things we actually have in our kitchen that pertain to each category I just mentioned. So things that should be at room temperature, bananas, basil, garlic, onions, potatoes, sweet potatoes, winter squash, and zucchini. Later, we will have summer squash. So I had to look up the difference between winter and summer squash. Winter squash is typically something that has a hard skin like a pumpkin. Summer squash is something that has a soft skin. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, already out of the things I mentioned for room temperature, I don't put basil in the proper place. I leave that in the fridge, so that's a no-no. This later is a no-no, but I do my garlic and onions in the wrong location, my potatoes in the wrong location. I'm pretty sure I put all of my squash type items in the fridge, so failing this already hardcore. Things that I need to leave at room temperature until they ripen and then chill them are gonna be things like avocados, nectarines, pineapples, and plums. To be honest, typically I either fully refrigerate or fully keep out of the refrigerator. I don't in my day-to-day -day life, I'm not conscious of things being like, okay, it's on the counter right now, but it needs to be in the fridge later. So I'm gonna need to get better at that. Then things just to go in the refrigerator. Apples, bell peppers, blueberries, broccoli, cabbage, raspberries, carrots, cilantro, greens, grapefruit, grapes, strawberries, lemons, lettuce, limes, mushrooms, oranges, and then those summer squash. We're pretty good about that stuff, except for apples. I didn't know apples should go in the fridge. I've been putting those on my wall. So that will be shifting. So not to try to confuse at all, you've got your items that either produce ethylene, are susceptible to ethylene, or non-susceptible to ethylene, and then you have your things that should either be in the fridge 
on the counter or start off on the counter and end up in the fridge. Diving a little bit deeper, mainly with the whole ethylene thing, into the items that I know I'm putting in the wrong place that I need to better organize in my kitchen, I kind of jotted down some extra notes to share with you. So potatoes, they need to be not on my wire rack, on the wall, by the window. They need to be in a dark place, a cool dark place, ideally high humidity. Their example is like a wine cellar type or like a wine fridge. I don't have either of those. So high humidity, unfortunately, might not really be a thing. But either way, cool dark place. They want air circulation, allow air circulation. So I actually purchased and made these boxes. I got them on Amazon. I will post a link for them. But I put these together. I did not realize I was gonna need to put them together. So that was a fun little surprise, but I did do it, see? So I intentionally got these without lids on them, so that will work great for having them with circulation. You want them to be away from appliances that generate heat and they are ethylene sensitive. So before we had it by our espresso machine, we had it by other things, stuff that was creating heat, all no-nos. We'll not do it again now. Potatoes. How many times can I repeat myself? I'm working on consuming all of my fruit and veg before it starts to go bad. I forget about things sometimes. Potatoes are easily one of them. And they tend to grow sprouts. Sometimes they get soft. Sometimes they get a little green tinge to them. And I kind of knew the rules, but I didn't always know the rules. And I think I cheated the rules more times than I should. So being a good example, learning about stuff, sharing the stuff, gonna change. Poison control says, Toss potatoes if they're green or have sprouts. If you continue doing a little bit of research for the day-to-day -day regular human that's not as much of a stickler, even if it's growing sprouts, if it is still firm but there is no green, then you can just cut off the sprouts and go with it, be a happy camper, eat your stuff. We're heating them to cook them anyways. We're not eating potatoes raw. Don't eat your potatoes raw. But when it comes to the green that is on it, so the green indicates potato skins contain toxic level of glycoalkaloids. It's not good and should be thrown out. Glycoalkaloids are a natural pesticide that the potatoes are creating in themselves so that pests won't get to them. And it is a natural nerve gas slash paralyzer. I don't think I need to convince anyone of anything else for reasons to not eat your room potatoes. <laughs> Jumping to the next item, leafy greens. We're jumping in the fridge now. So refrigerate unwashed. 
I always am a big fan of washing my fruit and vegetable when I get them from the grocery store just because I want to make sure that everything is rinsed off of them, people are touching a bunch of things, but this is a lesson for me that I need to wait to watch my, wash my greens until I'm actually about to use them. So don't wash them right when they go in the fridge, just do it as you're utilizing them. And seal in a Ziploc plastic bag. So for freshness. I'm not a big fan of plastic bags, but especially when you're able to use the same bag multiple times for the same thing, not a big deal. I'm gonna use the same exact bag for this lettuce for ages. Apples, refrigerate in a plastic bag, ideally in a crisper drawer. Apples produce ethylene. So having them in a crisper drawer in a bag with other fruit that are non-sensitive to ethylene. Examples of this, are strawberries, blueberries, oranges, and raspberries. So now back to the cabinet behind me, I'm gonna have another one of these boxes that has onions and garlic in it. So they wanna be stored in a cool, dark place, low humidity, air circulation, separate from potatoes and sweet potatoes. So that's basically the rundown of my plan for the kitchen of where things should be placed, and I'm just gonna kinda start moving stuff. So I'll show you what it looks like after the fact, but I'm super excited to get this going. I think these boxes are so cute and it's a good plan. Here we go. Okay, let's take a little side moment. Did anybody else notice the soy milk change at Costco? So it looked like almost the same thing, right? Literally the same product. Seven grams of protein, woot woot, same size and everything. Okay, so I knew this one was 90 calories. And I looked at this one, it's 100 calories. Same protein, same serving size. I'm just saying. I don't know, man. I don't know. The moment of truth. Ah, accomplished. So we've got onions in here. Got a little bit of garlic hanging out there. Behind we have the soy milk and the espresso. I did a little bit of revamping behind the scenes when you weren't watching. Move those shelves to be even. This one down here. We've got potatoes and sweet potatoes. Okay, I looked up. Because these sweet potatoes do have little growth guys on them. Apparently, totally fine. It's only potatoes that are trying to kill us. Then moving into the refrigerator. Got apples in a bag. We have blueberries. We got the nectarines in here. Apparently, nectarines like being next to things with ethylene. And then we got these guys, the bell peppers, the summer squash, because they are soft on the outside. I mean, they don't feel soft here, but compared to a pumpkin. We've got the lettuce, kale, both in a bag, cilantro, hanging out. And then, I mean, really the saddest but cutest part of the whole thing, my basically empty baskets, but that's okay. We repurposed the bottom one to kind of go with our espresso maker that's down there. And then if I ever get, and well not if I ever, when we get things like avocados and such, that will be the perfect center basket for it. 
switching over to the other side. We already had this as more of the smoothie zone, if you can tell, and the bananas are perfectly located there. Nothing for them to bother, nothing for them to quickly ripen, all is well. And thanks for doing that kitchen revamp with me. I hope you learned some stuff. I definitely learned a lot. I'm gonna be keeping everything how it should be, so keep me in check. I'm gonna keep my kitchen in check. But I'm so excited to have it this way. Like I was saying, it's about time. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will see you on Monday. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Plant Sally. Have a good time, guys. Bye.